Hello? Is this thing on? <laughs> Good. Um, I'm Lars Brink. I'm a front-end architect from System8 in Denmark. Uh, we use uh, Azure, .NET, and Angular to uh, create projects using the continuous delivery uh, principles. I also spend a lot of time worrying and writing about Angular on the Angular in Depth uh, blog online. Earlier this year, I said, uh, don't get me wrong, ID is nice and all, but where are my shiny new features? And I found them, but they were hiding. <laughs> I've been very vocal about optional Angular modules, tree shakeable components as a possible future for IB. Um, but uh, the, the most game changing features of IB is actually called features. You would think that a company built around a search engine would come up with a name that's easy to find when searching. Try go searching for ID features and you don't get anything about the ID features. Uh, some people also refer to them as higher order components. So I guess that's better, at least it's more searchable. So note to Google. Let's look at an overview of what, what ID features actually are. Uh, there are three types of them. Component features, directive features, and uh, host features for bootstrap components. Um, the features are actually the Angular way of doing make sense. So composing uh, shared business logic um, uh, into components. Here's a simple one for you. We want to add the username as an observable property to a component, so we create this feature. Uh, a feature is a function that returns another function that takes into, uh, as a parameter, um, the component definition, which is also a new thing from IB. And a lot of these features will just wrap the, the component factory and add some more uh, shared business logic to them. So in this one, we, uh, we create a component instance from the original factory, then we inject the, the NGRX store, and we add to this component an observable property called username. Then we return the component. So that's our first very simple feature. And this is how we use them. Uh, for the features option, for the component decorator factory, we pass in a list of the features, and here is our new features called with username. And then we can add the type, declare the type on the component, and um, Angular will uh, apply the feature to us. So now we don't have this, uh, these implementation details of actually collecting the, the username from the store or any concept, concept of the store whatsoever. Features are supported by the IB runtime today, but they're not in the uh, component metadata. So what we saw before, where I added the features, the, the with username to the features option, that's not actually here today. But we can start experimenting anyways, like usual. Uh, so this is what IB does uh, with the component definition today. It's, it stores them as a static property on a component class and it adds in the list of features. So if we just add a list of features at the runtime, the IE runtime will pick it up and apply the features. So we can create a, a small and uh, pretty simple decorator uh, called component features. And it just uh, ensures that we're doing this at runtime, not compiled from, uh, but before bootstrap. So we add the features and we apply them to the component definition. And now we're golden. So for the rest of this talk, every time there's a features option, just think we're using this second decorator instead. And this is how, what it looks like when we actually apply it. So very similar, but it's not in the official angle of public, public API yet. Uh, one thing that is semi-public is the, the host features for Bootstrap components. Uh, so when we use the render component, which is also not public yet, but close, close enough, uh, there's actually a host features option, which is public to that function. And we can add in uh, features or host features for our Bootstrap components. For example, if we want to use the lifecycle in Bootstrap components, 
uh, that we have rendered using the render component, then we can add this uh, feature from, from Angular itself called Lifecycle Hooks feature. I also use the features internally where they have these four features that they apply to every component and directive whenever it's relevant. For example, when components have the unchanges hook, it'll apply this feature and the unchanges feature. But that's all internal. So here's a case study of, of a more interesting uh, feature, component feature. Uh, this is our, on the right hand side here, we have what I call a mixed component. And this is a simple example, but um, it's, it's, it, it selects as to do's from the NGRX store. It injects the NGRX store to do so. And it iterates over the to do's observable using the async pipe. Uh, to me, this has three code smells in it, even this simple component. The UI, so the person. It's supposed to be a presentational component, but the UI depends on the state container, which in this example is the NGRX store. It has the querying details for the state container, which is the select to do's piped into the store. And it doesn't even work on the actual data. It works on an observable, which is a container object for the actual data structures. Uh, we can create a feature to get rid of this first code smell of injecting a store. So now we're using the feature to query for the state from our store. So now the component doesn't have uh, the dependency on the store itself, but the feature does. So we're abstracting away some of these code smells. However, the UI still has the querying details and it still has this container object. So let's create another feature. So now there's no uh, querying logic anymore. There's only the name of the property we want to uh, store it to in the component, and we fix the second code smell. The final one will have to do some more work. We'll create a very simple presentational component only for the to-do item itself. The template is very simple, but this is supposed to make it easy to understand. It takes in an input parameter of the actual data structure, not an observable, but an actual to-do data structure. So now out here, we are passing in the to-do. Uh, after uh, using the async pipe, we have the actual objects in the let to-do, and we pass them in as an input parameter to this uh, to-do item uh, com component. But we still have this observable in this, uh, this to-do list component. So still we're using a container object, not the actual data structures. And I don't like that. This is personal opinion, but I would like to have another option. So instead, like before, we can just add yet another feature called with to do's, and it'll assign the objects, it'll subscribe to the state, and assign the objects to the property. So now we have a simple data structure instead of an observable. So I'm jumping to conclusions very quickly, but I was afraid I would run out of time. I had a more interesting uh, use case, but uh, I'll go through this. There's a lot in the conclusion as well, so I don't want to waste any of your time. But uh, when I publish the, the presentation, you can look into the, the more advanced use cases instead. Uh, so here's uh, a list of use cases for these features. You can use it to access route parameters, route data, query parameters without injecting the router or the activated route, which is different to each component. So you can't really wrap it, uh, wrap it in, in a nice service because you would have to pass this activated route, which is specific to the component every time. But we can actually do that with features. That's very nice. They use the same injector exact same injector as the component, so because of that we can actually inject the activated route even though this is reusable logic or shared logic between components. Uh, we saw a little bit of this replacing container components in this example. Uh, so if you have container components just for selecting state, even for the other way around as well, if you want to dispatch actions, uh, that was, was that was the thing that was in the advanced use case is how can we dispatch actions to the NGRX store without injecting the store itself or even creating the actions. So I've, 
I have a GitHub repo for this talk, and in this, this repo there is also a feature for converting a minute event from a component into actions, uh, NGRX actions, which are dispatched to the store. So again, I'm trying to hide away some of the boilerplate code uh, by using features. And now I have separation of concerns, so I only have presentational concerns in my presentation components. So a lot of the simple container components can actually be replaced using features. Uh, in the repo, I also created an, an example for when you want to synchronize the state to local storage. So that's another place where we, we would normally use container components. Uh, we, I think we can even make some features for, use, for creating the local store for local UI state. If you want to, that's definitely something that's on my to-do list for experimenting with features. You can also use it to observe lifecycle events. You can use it to convert observables to event emitters if you want to be very purist and not expose observables on Angular components, but only expose event emitters. That's trivial to do, but to do it, you have to add boilerplate code, so you can use features instead. And you can also use it for more advanced scenarios like observe UI events. Uh, turn them into observ observable properties instead, like a click and key press. But to do that, you would have to work with raw uh, I instructions, so that's more an advanced use case, but definitely doable. Uh, we can also use it to manage the, instruction, uh, the subscriptions to observables and call mark dirty to update the UI if we don't have some. Um, so with higher order components uh, implemented using I component features, uh, we have uh, a way to, to create this, this common business logic without inheritance, without decorators. We don't have to add some extra package configuration or dependency. We don't have to add a custom webpack configuration. And features will be tree shapeable. Not if you use this component features they created that I created, but once it hopefully at some point gets part of the public Angular API, features will also be tree shapeable. Like everything else, it also has some limitations, of course. The first one, like I said, it's not public in the Angular API yet. Uh, also, feature declaration, so this list of features, it can't vary at runtime. So you have to uh, add that list at, at compile time. Uh, however, we could do some variation if we created like meta features, so features to control other features, so when one condition is met, this feature is not enabled. Another limitation is we can only have one feature list per component or directive. Uh, these features are also available for directives, not only for components, but I only showed them for components today. But this, this list of features, this array, can only be applied to one component, so how could we do that instead? How could we use the same component, but with different features? Uh, I think we could do that by extending a base class and adding features to the subclasses, but I'm not sure. Uh, something to, to keep in mind, definitely. So these are my contact details. There's a link to the slides. It's not active right now, but it will be soon. There's the GitHub repo I was talking about, where you can find everything you need to start experimenting with this yourself, and so on. So thank you very much for your time. I'm very happy to be here today.